Marhaba. In the previous lesson, we discussed while loops extensively. In this video, we will introduce the other type of loop available in MATLAB, the for loop. A for loop is a block of commands that are repeated a specified number of times. It begins with the statement for and ends with an end. Here we see two examples. The top one is the general structure and the bottom a simple example with actual commands. The variable that is named immediately after the for is called the index variable. So in the bottom example, AA is our index variable. This index variable will take on one value from a vector, then the commands in the loop will be processed, and then the index variable is updated, and so on. Normally, the expression that defines this vector is an incremented vector, which allows the index variable to change at constant intervals each time. In the example below, AA will first take on the value 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and finally 5. After the commands are processed with AA equal to 5, then we move on to the code that follows the end statement. As always, examples make things clearer. We'll discuss three examples here. To understand the step-by-step -step computations, we'll use a table to record the values of each variable. Notice that this table looks a little different than the tables we used for while loops. In the leftmost column, we list the name of the index variable. In this case, it is AA. Then we list all the other variables involved. Here, that is only the variable named prod, short for product. I can shrink the table because no other columns will be used. Now we begin to fill in values. Before AA exists, prod is assigned the value of 1. And now the key idea. Thanks to this incremented vector, we already know that AA will first equal 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and finally 5. After this point, the loop stops, so we can erase what's left of the table. This is different than what we saw with while loops, where we didn't know beforehand when the loop would stop. Now to compute the prod values. The new prod value comes from the current prod value times the current AA value. Here, 1 times 1 equals 1. Next, 1 times 2 equals 2. Next, 2 times 3 equals 6. Next, 6 times 4 equals 24. Lastly, 24 times 5 equals 120. That concludes this example. This next example demonstrates that the index vector is not required to be defined as an incremented vector, although that is how it is usually done. Here, the index vector is manually entered, and BB will take on these values in order from left to right, 3, then 1, then 2. Now that the tracking table is trimmed to the size we need, we simply need to compute TACO each step of the way. Before the loop, TACO equals 0. Then the new TACO value is equal to BB squared plus the current TACO value. Here, that is 3 squared plus 0, or 9. Next, we have 1 squared plus 9 equals 10. Finally, 2 squared plus 10 equals 14, and the loop is complete. This third example is the most complicated one we will discuss here, and it features array indexing to change specific values in a vector. The already trimmed table is shown here, with index variable z going from 1 to 3. Before reaching the loop, Bob will look like this vector. It was originally four zeros, but then the first index was assigned the value 2. Now, entering the loop, z takes on the value 1. This makes the center command read as shown. So, it is apparent that we are assigning the value 3 to the second index in Bob. This updates the vector Bob to look like this. The next time through, z equals 2, and the command reads like this. So, a 7 is assigned to the third index in Bob. The last time through, z equals 3, and the command reads like this. So, a 16 is assigned to the fourth index in Bob. 
Reflecting on this final vector, we can pick out a pattern. It looks like each index value is equal to the previous index value plus 1 squared, then 2 squared, then 3 squared. Looking at the center command, we notice the same logic written out as code.